first thing that we're going to look at is a type of reflex called a modal action pattern. Right? So MAPs are, well, let me try that again. MAPs are modal action patterns. I personally refer to these or refer to these things as fixed action patterns because that's the way I learned them. However, people these days tend to uh, experts in the field tend to call these modal action patterns uh, for various reasons, all beyond the scope of the course. Uh, but we as psychologists like to change things every now and again just to see if anyone's paying attention. Um, so that's what we did. All right. No, it's actually a more accurate reason than that. It's a mode. It's only there for a certain amount of time. Blah blah blah. Anyway, we'll get there. Similar to basic reflexes, but much more complex, right? Here's the keys. They occur in a single species or related species, all right? And they occur in nearly all members of that species, and they occur to similar stimuli, right? So if we put all those stimuli together, blah, 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 all the ones that might elicit this particular modal action pattern, right? Um, those things are going to occur in nearly all members of a species. Now, we say on uh, nearly all uh, because we're accurate. <laughs> You may have some damage, or somebody may be born with some damage, or born with a, a mutation, and they may not have that particular modal action pattern. Or they may not have a hand to cause their modal action pattern to happen. Who knows, right? Um, so we say nearly all members of a species, um, the response is going to look the same across those species, and it will even look the same across similar species. So if we're talking about us, we'll probably similar, see similar modal action patterns in other higher primates, right? um, uh, and, and so on and so forth. Get the idea. Okay? Ha! Here's the cool part. These change depending on the state of the organism. Right? Depending on things about the organism, a certain map may be present or a map may not be present. Right? The male stickleback fish is a great example, although at the moment of this recording, I am completely blanking out on the example. Although it is in your textbook, I do promise you that. Um, I remember reading it last night. I just don't remember what it said. That happens. Uh, it has to do, I think the male stickleback example has to do with mating behavior and a, a couple of things along those lines. It has, there has to, the organism has to be in a certain state. It has to be in a certain state of development as well. And these things are usually open, only open for certain windows. They're only available for certain times during the organism's development, meaning that the window thing, it might be there. You might have a modal action pattern for six months or a year, or, and it'll go away. Okay. Um, and, and that's one of the other criteria. We're getting into that. Here's an example of one. The feeding behavior of a herring gull. There's a little chick. Aw, cute. Okay, here's a mama. We're going to call her. We're going to call that one mama. I don't know if it is. I want you to notice the red dot. Look at the red dot on the bird's beak. All right? Then look at the little chick. Well, the little chick all right, sees that little red dot, and that causes a modal action pattern to activate. All right? Once that modal action pattern activates, the chick comes up, and the modal action pattern is this. It comes up and goes, pick, pick, pick and it pecks that red dot, right? The pecking of the red dot, so when the, when the parent, when the, the parent goal receives that little tick, 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 tick on the dot, right? Then what happens is it causes a modal action pattern in that critter, and that one then goes and it regurgitates its food back to the little baby, right? So you got two maps, they're working together. Um, adult herring goals do not peck other adult herring goals. <laughs> All right. So the point being, when they see a little red dot, right? So the point being that these things go away. They're only there for a certain amount of time. So multiple maps working together. Chick pecks, parent regurgitates. What invokes the pecking? All right. Interesting question. Uh, probably some sort of stimulus. That would be the red, right? Um, and, and that's kind of the point. And let me see if I got that in the next. Ah. So the, the red dot is what I told you is what's going on, right? So I told you on this slide that it was the red dot that causes it. Yes, it is, but there's more detail because we're experimentalists. We like to study this stuff. Here it is. All right, for the herring goals, the long, thin, moving object pointed downward with a constraining, or uh, a constraining, that's great. Good job reading, Ryan. Well done. Uh, a contrasting red patch at the tip, all right? Other stimuli were irrelevant. How did we figure this out? Well, experimenters are experimenters. We took pieces of wood, colored them yellow, and you know, with a pointed downward, like the tip of the beak, right? And then put a little big red dot on the bottom of it, and then see if that would initiate the modal action pattern in the chicks. And I'll be darned if it doesn't. Right? Um, so then they changed, they varied that a lot uh, to the point where they figured out what stimuli it was that was important, and it was the stimuli that were listed in the, in the, in the, in the point above that one. So it has to be long, something's gotta be long, it's gotta be thin got to be moving, right? And it's got to be pointed downward, right? which makes sense, right? It's pointed downward because that's the bottom of the, um, <laughs> you couldn't see that, the bottom of the beak there is pointed slightly downward, and it has to have a red patch. And it doesn't matter. Anything else doesn't matter. As long as you've got that, you can initiate that modal action pattern in the herring gold chick. Sounds a little weird, but it works, right? That's the nature of 
um, of reflexes is that if you get the stimulus right, you can produce the reflex. And it doesn't have to be um, an exact copy of, wh of what uh, of what it's uh, what's originally tied into. You know, it doesn't have to be an exact copy of the peak. Just something close enough. So we've explored what those are. Sign stimuli, uh, I'm trying to think if we want to cover that one too much. I don't want to cover that too much in here. I can talk about it for days. All right. Um, so read your book on the sign stimuli stuff, um, talking about what that really means and how it's a particular signal. Super normal stimulus, um, kind of fun to talk about. Basically, if I put this herring gull next to its chick and then I take a bigger uh, homemade fake beak, all right, as long as it's bigger and more intense and more contrasting and brighter red, you're getting the idea here, than the original than, than the original parent's beak, then what's going to happen is the chick will go after that one, the fake one, rather than the big one. Uh, there's some other examples in your textbook as well about supernormal stimuli, um, and there's some fun videos that you might be able to catch online. Um, but uh, kind of one of the classic examples is the traditional egg, right, from a bird, um, and of course they incubate that egg. Well, if you take a bigger egg, painted the same as this one, as the original egg, even though it's fake, it's made out of wood or plastic or whatever, the, the parent bird will sit on top of, top of it and try to incubate it. Because the egg itself and the visual stimulus of the egg produces a modal action pattern. Um, <coughs> so much for uh, parenting instinct. It is, in that case, it is simply a reflex. All right? So the reflex happens. In this case, if you use a stimulus that's more intense, super normal, as you will, uh, then that will cause the modal, modal reaction pattern um, as well, but it will cause it to go towards that particular stimulus, not the, its own egg. It will, it will sit there and cover up a wooden egg forever, <laughs> basically, until you take it away. It's kind of kind of weird, right? but that's, that's we, we had to figure it out somehow. Uh -huh. So that's how we did it. Oh, humans have these too. Uh, now, I'm going to warn you right now, before I go any further, this is a graphic image. If you do not want to see a graphic image, and I don't mean sexually graphic, I mean this is uh, um, visually graphic in terms of um, what it represents and, and where the photo was taken and things. So if you don't want to see that, skip this slide and just know that PTSD okay, uh, is, there's an argument that maybe PTSD is a modal action pattern. Right? There are lots of modal action patterns in humans, um, specifically, uh, you know, the, the you know the rooting reflex. If I do this, and the baby turns towards that, and in an infant, mind you. So if I do this, and the baby turns toward towards that's a rooting reflex. You have the grasping reflex on an infant. So if I touch the hand on an infant, they grasp. Okay, um, so that's the grasping reflex. Those are modal action patterns. There's some others, but those are some important ones. M language development may be a modal action pattern. We're not sure yet because there seems to be certain windows uh, where you're hypersensitive to learning language uh, or where humans are hypersensitive to that. So uh, that might be a modal action pattern. They're not completely sure. That would kind of resolve, part. that would partially resolve the Skinner versus uh, Chomsky debate, if you're familiar with that. And that's kind of one of the ways that some people have tried to reconcile those folks. Anyway, PTSD is another one. So here we go. Right. You don't have to continue past this point. Here's the here's the the nasty picture, um, and then just fast forward um, until the picture is gone. It's, there's no gross detail in, in close, but it's kind of a sad picture. So here you go. Buddy of mine was in Afghanistan, and he was a kind of a correspondent. He, he was a, he was a reporter, and he was taking pictures. And this is at a forward operating base out in eastern Afghanistan. Uh, and this is what an IED does, folks. These are not little, how oh, cute little bombs that blow up, that blow up mailboxes and stuff. No, they blow up cars. And this is a Humvee, and this is an up-armored Humvee. So that glass that you see down there, the upside down thing in the glass, that's like two inch thick or one inch thick glass. It's bulletproof glass. This thing is up-armored. This is a majorly hardcore vehicle, and it hit one IED. Several people died in this, right? As you can see, at least one guy survived, right? Um, I think three soldiers died. Four soldiers died in this particular accident. Uh, accident in this particular attack. Uh, the guy that took the picture was there at the time. It was a uh, convoy type thing, and boom, he hit. And this one officer took the picture. Um, this picture was refused to be published in quite a few different organizations. The U.S. government said, "No, we don't want to demonstrate what actually happens to our troops over there." Quite literally. So it's kind of sad. Uh, but I, I have it here because of the fact that. Nearly every member of our species respond, not all of them, but most of us respond similarly to these extremely traumatic events. And those responses look the same, and they look like post-traumatic stress disorder. Right? Um, so it's possible, not sure yet, and it's kind of a guess, but it's possible that PTSD is a modal action pattern. Now, 
the classes of stimuli it kind of fits uh, anything majorly traumatic it could be an event like this it could be something else there's there's all sorts of things that it could be right um, how about other species well I'm trying to get you the criteria here for model action patterns right so other species well dogs display PTSD type behavior when they go through war actions and things like that they end up burning out if you will and looking depressed and engaging in similar behaviors that humans engage in so maybe it is a modal action pattern we're not sure it would sure help if we knew a little bit because then we could uh, kind of focus our treatments on on those types of things and we can understand when this is going to happen we can't really stop a modal action pattern but you might be able to understand a bit more about it so Anyway, uh, that's enough of those. Let's move on. Talk about uh, something slightly different. Uh, 